What's up everybody? Thanks for coming back to my channel and checking out some more of my videos. Uh, thanks for all the comments on the old ones. Uh, it sounds like you guys want to hear more about defense, so that's what we're going to go over today. We're going to talk about the positioning of the blocker and where the defender should be or could be throughout uh, the, the extent of a point. So I want to remind you to subscribe, like, share, and uh, keep commenting so that I can keep bringing you guys some videos and information that you like. And as always, go ahead and follow along on volleycamphermosa.com. Uh, let's get started. So as we can see here, Sean Rosenthal jumps, serves, and steps right into the middle of the court. And we can see that Chase... And this is important for all you young blockers out there. Uh, the blocker has to start in the middle of the court. Now, why do we want him to start in the middle of the court instead of to one side or maybe the side that we're serving? It's so that he can defend the on one and on two attacks. Maybe there's going to be an overpass or an unpredictable overpass, and he's equidistant from every area on the court, so he can make a clean move for the overpass uh, to put it away immediately. He's also in a good position to protect the onto attack, and that's massively important, and it's getting more important as the game progresses. Uh, more and more teams are going on one and on two, so we need to be prepared for that with a stable blocker in the middle of the court. Right here, after Sean's serve, he gets into this shaded middle position, right? And this is where he's going to get for the majority of his points. As soon as he gets right here, He's just going to hold right here in his diagonal, making sure that the setter cannot go on to. Uh, some defenders will go immediately to their position, but the main thing here is to make sure that you're prepared for anything that can happen. So as you see, Sean gets there and he's prepared for this set. Now he's able to make an athletic move if he needs to, just in case Ian decides to do a standing on to attack. All right. Uh, Chase has... Uh, the blocker here, Chase Buttinger, has fronted Ian to make sure that he cannot attack on two. That's also important. And then he is getting in front of me as the hitter. Okay. Now we can see that Sean made a late move into the cross. Uh, Sean's kind of a, a jumper. He has a big plant on defense. And not a lot of players will do this, but Sean decides to do it. And um, he's been pretty successful with it. So Chase here is blocking a line, and his job is to get his chest in the middle of my attack arm. He doesn't quite do that. Maybe in this instance, I don't know what was going through his head, but maybe he was trying to bait me into hitting a line shot. So uh, fortunately, I get it over him, and we get a little high line kill. Again, we're going to talk more about defense today and where we should be standing. We can see that Ian, my blocker here, is standing in the middle of the court. Again, always protecting on two, and my job is to get in, okay? Now, I didn't get very center, but I don't think Sean is a major attack here, right? He's not facing the net. He's not able to jump. He's forced into a bump set. Um, still, though, I want to be prepared and actively prepared before the set contact. That way... I don't lose any points on, on just being lazy, on, on not being prepared for an on-two attack. Okay? You know, all of the people out there who are talking about you know, co-ed players and cheap plays on one and on two, it, that doesn't exist in the pros. If you can win a ball with one touch or two touches, that's just being efficient and it's being smart. And if you're a team that's getting beat by one or two touches, then you need to make sure that uh, <laughs> you don't get beat anymore. So, um, again, we're going to look at the blocker now. So, Ian's protected the on two. He's safe in the middle. He is positioning himself where he thinks Chase wants to end up. A lot of blockers would have immediately gone all the way out here to where uh, Chase is standing. But we know that Chase likes to come in at an angle. So... Ian gets a good idea of where Chase wants to end up hitting, and he stays inside there. Most left sides come in and attack at an angle, so this is where Ian positions himself. And he does a really good job. If you can see where he is, you know, he, he holds himself into an area where they're setting up their hit. So 
Really good job by Ian. And he this looks like a line block, but he doesn't quite get his head in the middle of Chase's arm, and Chase is up high right now. Okay. Um, I'm back here defending in the cross, and I make a I don't need to make a move because I see a pretty decent window. Chase does a good job of going up high. Oh, I got one. Oh, poor Ian. Okay, so I got stable early, and this allowed me to make a play on the high line. And if you notice, this is a pretty good high line, but my defensive footwork is crossover, dive, all right? And I've covered uh, all but maybe three to four feet of the court in one step and a dive, and I was able to get a touch on that. So... Uh, we're going to keep talking here just for a little bit, and I would just want everybody to be comfortable on where the blocker is going to stand uh, for these plays, and that replay is not going to help us. So, Chase serves. Again, Sean is prepared here in the middle of the court, making sure... Look at this. See? He's focused. This is a focused defender. Rosenthal is here, making sure that I can't go on to, I can't sit over, I can't stand and hit lefty. And Chase is running towards the middle of the court. Okay, This is important. This little crossover step here shows that Chase wasn't going directly at the hitter. Chase was centralizing himself, making sure, or centralizing, centering? Yeah, you can leave it in the comments. Uh, he's making sure that I can't attack on two, uh, just the way that we made sure that he couldn't. Then he positions himself where we want to go, okay? Gets his body right there. Head is pretty much on the shoulder, and it looks like they're running a four block, doesn't it? So we got a diving cross block. Sean leaves uh, kind of late to go to that line. Or sorry, kind of late is, is actually pretty accurate. I think he moved a little bit too early here because Ian should be able to still see him out of his peripheral moving this early. So I think Sean wanted to wait just a little bit longer because Ian was able to see him and we get a nice overkill. Okay. Ian's turn to serve and let's see if he approaches the middle of the court after the serve. Doesn't matter because we miss. Okay. Blocker stands in the middle of the court. All right, protecting the on one, protecting the on two, and Sean hits the sky ball out, and I feel the need to show him how to do it. Okay, here we see Ian get himself in the middle of the court, protecting both. See that move? See this little lean to make sure that he is prepared for chase. All right, smart. That just means he's prepared, and now he can release that position and go over to Sean. All right, this is Ian's version of a three here. He takes this small jab step into the cross to try to make Sean feel like the blocker is in his cross. All right, and then he jab steps out to the line, a little shift step, hoping to get Sean to hit into his block. Sean just goes bang cross and gets it there for a kill. Okay. You can kind of see the timing that we matched up on, me and Ian here. I'm Again, I, I've come from the center where I was protecting the on two. Then I can get into my defensive position. I wanted to make Sean believe that I was leaving. That's a pretty bad juke. <laughs> uh, I don't think he's believing anybody there. But uh, I try to get back into my position and hold. And Sean gets a kill on us. Now, jukes aren't for every play, and they shouldn't be for the majority of your volleyball plays, but uh, they will be necessary if somebody's going to be getting a kill every single point. Just make sure that you get stable early. That is the number one thing that I can tell defenders, is get stable early and challenge the hitter's best shot to your best footwork your best balanced footwork. And after they get three, four, maybe five kills in a row comfortably from one position, then you can start throwing in some play fakes and some jukes. Um, of course, that is unless you have a good scouting report on them. So 
Be balanced first and then play with stuff later. All right. Next serve coming from Ian. Okay, we have a four and a one. Hopefully we can bait Chase into hitting a cross ball or an overline. All right, not loving Ian's path here. He almost centralizes himself. Uh, and we need to be a little bit more cautious on protecting that on two because he wouldn't have been anywhere near the ball if that got to Sean's right hand. So uh, now he shifts. He finds where Chase wants to go. I'm holding middle as the defender. Now we can reposition, but you remember we have a four block. So Ian leaves himself sort of on the line here. I'm holding stable, stable, stable. And this, I like the timing of this because I left way after his jump and I'm going for that high line and, and I guess Chase just saw Ian. Right? Not every defensive play is going to work, but over time, every time you run a play, you should be paying attention to what the hitter did and why. All right, Chase does a good job of putting this ball away, but still, I really like my timing here because I don't think Chase can see me on takeoff. Maybe he just felt Ian take a big dive into the cross, and that's why he was able to hammer. One more play, just talking briefly about defensive positioning and blocker positioning. All right, blocker's in the middle of the court. We've talked about that. Sean serves it up, and Chase is supposed to be protecting on two, doesn't believe Ian is any sort of threat, so he's focused on me, all right? Sean Rosendahl is there in the back middle, waiting for me to hit, and uh, he wants to get me to shoot. Now, if you notice this little move here, he either notices that it's a tight ball, or he wants to get me to shoot, either one. Um, if that shift into the middle happens, it usually means that he's trying to get the hitter to think, all right? That's one, and force them into shooting, and then he's cut the court in half. Or he could have just noticed that this set was going tight, and so most players will poke short on tight balls. So Sean crashes in just a little bit and then gets stable. Right? It's a pretty good in move, making sure that he's prepared for anything there. Sharp enough shot to get me a kill. So, uh, quick lesson. Defender, make sure you're protecting middle for on one, on two. Blocker, make sure that when you are approaching the net, you're approaching the middle, the space between the players, because the setter is 100% your first threat, and you have to protect that. If you're getting beat on one, on two, it is your team's fault. Work harder, stay focused, and don't lose those easy points. Um, give me some comments. Give me some uh, likes and subscribes, and tell me what you guys want to see next in terms of videos. Uh, I really enjoy doing this, and I hope I can bring some benefit for you. We got a lot more blogs coming out and more videos coming out, so stay tuned and hop on our email list over at volleycampromosa.com. And if you ever want to come out to a camp or do a lesson with us, you are more than welcome. We are in Hermosa Beach, California, and I hope to see you out here or at any AVP or FIVB or 1440 event. All right, see you later, and good night.